Hello everyone, Video Fort Angel here, and today I'm going to introduce you to Logic Pro X. Logic Pro X is a digital audio workstation, or DAW, and what that basically means is it's a virtual workspace for you to collect, compile, and edit audio. So without any further ado, we're going to click the button, get the program launched, and dive right in. So first up is going to be your project menu. As you can see, you have a couple of different templates here to work with, but because we are starting on the ground floor, we're going to start with a blank template, which is empty project, highlight that and choose, and it will open up your session. So all of this workspace you see is your recording session. This is your audio menu, and it's basically going to be just how you determine um, what kind of sounds are going to be going into your session and how you're going to collect them. So software instrument and MIDI, you're going to be, be using a, a USB controller or a MIDI keyboard to trigger virtual instruments that are already located in the software. If you have an external controller, this is where you would choose it, your MIDI device or your USB device. If you wanted to start with a certain instrument, you would choose it from this menu. I like to just go with the default. But we're going to start here at audio. So audio menu is basically anything like a microphone, um, a guitar, anything that's outside of the software that you need to capture. You will need an interface in order to do this. Um, I'm using an Apogee Duet. And as you can see, I have two inputs in my Duet. I have the option to use uh, two mono inputs or to use them both as a stereo left and right. I'm just going to go mono. This is my output, which also goes out through my Duet. You have your options here. You can create any number of tracks that you'd like, but for basic uh, instructional purposes, we're going to start with just one and then press create. So now we have an audio track. As you can see, we have our volume control right here. You can make it louder or less loud. We have pan, which determines if you're going left or right. We can move it to the left, we can move it to the right. And that's where the sound is placed in your picture, as it were. This is the mute button. You can mute your channel. Solo means you isolate it. It's the only one you hear. This is your record enable button, which means that you've got your track engaged and ready to be recorded. And this buddy right here is your input monitor. Now a word about your input monitor. Before you turn it on, you want to make sure that any speakers are off because you can create a wicked feedback loop by turning that on if you're using speakers to monitor. So when you are recording, you're going to want to keep your speakers off and you're going to want to use headphones. So I've got my headphones on. I can turn my input monitor on. And here I am talking on Logic. I'm going to turn that off just for now and run you through some of the many things that you see here. There's a lot to uncover, so we're going to keep it very, very basic for this first one. This is your library. This is where all your virtual instruments are stored. Um, this is your inspector button, which basically just takes you to the track that you're working on. You have all of the uh, inputs for your uh, plugins and stuff like that, which we will go over as we get deeper into it. And you have a couple different things here for editing. You have your mixer, which is all your channels. Like here's the stereo out, master. And this is the track that we're on right now where you can see my voice right here. So I'm gonna close that for now. This is uh, just some editing stuff. So when we get into editing, you will need to know this guy, but for now we can move right over here. Obviously pretty simple stuff, forward, back, stop, play. And this right here, when it turns um, from the stop button to this, it just means go to the beginning, which you can also utilize by pressing the return button. And this is record. This right here is um, kind of your session data. It's your project data. So you have a couple options. You can have beats and time, beats, time, or beats and project. I like to stay with beats and project because it gives you the most information but I'll show you what the other ones look like. Beats and time, that just changes this to the actual physical time. Beats, just the very basic measures of what you're doing. Time, literally just the clock. So I like beats and project. This is where you control your tempo. So if you have a specific tempo that you want to be recording at, this is where you're going to set it. You can either click and hold and drag down and up, or you can double click it and set it. Press return, done deal. 
Um, if you have a particular key that you want the song to be in, you can choose that here. I'm going to leave it C major for now. I very rarely use this, but you might. This is your time signature. You have a couple of options. First one is uh, where you can, you know, like say 4 over 4. If I wanted to do 6 over 8, I could change this to 6. I could change this to 8. And we have now waltz time. I'm going to go back to 4-4 four, because four, that's just how it's, uh, how it's mostly done. And we are done with that. Moving on. So from time signature to your right, we have cycle, which um, say I wanted to loop just a certain part to edit it. This little golden bar comes up. I can stretch it for as many or as few measures as I choose, and it's just going to loop that selection until I disengage it. This is a tuner. So if I had a guitar plugged in, see, I could just tune it to that. This is your count in or your pre-roll. And basically what that means is it's going to give you a number count before it actually begins recording. So in this case, one, two, three, four, start. And that's when it'll begin on, on start is when it will begin recording. This is the click track. It goes purple when you turn it on and then gray when you turn it off. If you are doing something with programming and you want it to grid, you want to keep your click engaged so you can stay on the grid. This is your grid right here. All of this stuff. And then we're back down to our friend, the track. So this stuff is pretty, pretty easy. You want to make sure that your monitoring level is not clipping. So clipping basically means uh, that the signal is too hot or it's too loud and it becomes distorted. The way for you to know is you will see this guy get red. He goes from kind of a green to a yellow and then you get in orange territory and then somewhere around here it starts turning to red. I'll actually turn this inspector button on so you can see it here too. Down here, if it gets too loud, Hey, 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 see how it's getting yellow? If it was too loud, it would clip, it would go all the way up here, and it would um, distort and create a really unpleasant sound. So for the most part, I would say you want to keep it no, uh, you want to make sure that your signal is stays about here, right here. It doesn't get any louder than that. So now we can turn that off, and look at what we've got. I've got a nice healthy signal going. I'm going to engage my input monitor so I can hear myself. Here I am. And now I am going to just record a quick snippet so that we can see how that works. You have two options here. You can click on the button or you can use the R on the keyboard. And you do want to be really careful because uh, logic responds to a lot of things that, that are on your keyboard. So you could hit, you know, say I accidentally hit A. Oh no, what am I doing? You want to be very careful about that. And also pay attention to what you are doing, because if you do press something like A, if you know you just pressed an A, you can press it again, and that will dis disengage whatever you just did. So I'm going to click on it to start, and it's going to give me that four count count in, and you're going to hear a click track to keep me on grid. Here we go. Now it's recording. See that first count happened? And it began recording right here. So now I'm just talking and it's recording me. You can see the little waveform of my voice here. And to stop, I press space bar or you can press this button, click this button right here. Excellent. So now if I wanted to return to the beginning, I would just press return. Or if I were here, I would press this guy right here, return to beginning. So now that I have something recorded, I'm going to turn my record enable off. I'm going to turn off my input monitoring. And I'm going to listen to what I just did. I'll turn it down a little bit because it'll probably be a bit loud. Now it's recording. See that first count happened? So there's me. There's what I just did. So this is very, very basic, but it's a good start. And again, if you need to kind of see a little bit more detail about your channel, you can open the inspector button. We'll help you to see what's going on. This is your channel strip right here. As you can see, there's multiples. This is just the uh, stereo out. So this is where all the tracks go and you can control the overall 
volume of your session. So now you know how to record a basic audio track. And always remember to save your work. Command S. It'll pull up. You name your project here. Logic. Tutorial. And then you determine where you're going to save it. Say I want to put it on my hard drive, or I want to put it on my desktop, in my documents, wherever. And then you pre press save, and it will save it wherever you want it to be saved. So that's a good start. Next we'll go a little deeper down the rabbit hole with uh, software instruments and learning how to edit and utilize some of the more advanced functions of Logic. I'm video for angel and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. See you next time. Oh, my God.